Welcome to Silver Pro, sponsored by SD Bullion. I'm your host, Yankee Stacking. I'm joined by my incredible co-host, Silver Dragons. How you doing, buddy? What's up? Happy to be here. Really excited for this topic, Yankee. Yeah, me too. Today, we're talking about how to time your silver purchases. Mm, but the <laughs> question I have is, should you even bother trying to time them, Yankee? It's certainly possible that we'd see the Comex getting drained of silver, mm -hmm. and it's kind of like, oh, well, <laughs> you better get it now because, you know, there might not be any next month or next year. Uh, but also, you know, if we are going into hyperinflation, your dollar's not going to buy you any silver, so you got to get rid of them <laughs> as quick as possible. Well, I look for events, scenarios that would make me either want to, you know, wait build up my fiat some for a larger purchase or potentially not wait back up the truck the first thing is federal reserve action Ooh, what just happened yesterday sd well they had the uh fomc meeting mm -hmm. you know they did the 75 basis point rate hike which we all expected that was no surprise uh, but everyone's kind of wondering, you know, what's going to happen mm -hmm. at the next meeting, which is on December 14th. Is the Fed going to be more dovish or more accommodative, as they like to call it, at some point in the future and stop all these big rate hikes? SD, they have been raising rates faster than any time since the 80s. Yeah, they're jacking up rates. I mean, obviously, yeah, they're showing that they're motivated to try and tackle inflation. Right. They, they said this, quote, the committee will take into account the cumulative tightening of monetary policy, the lags with which monetary policy affects economic activity and inflation and economic and financial developments. What they were saying there is we're going to keep an eye on what the economy does, what financial markets do. And the moment that statement came out, Markets, Fireworks. yeah, markets took off. Uh, I think the Dow was up 400 points and silver spiked up. And people were excited. Maybe they're going to do a little soft pivot soon. But Powell had some prepared remarks and he just threw a, a wet blanket on any thoughts of a pivot. He says, price stability is essential. And the historic record cautions strongly against prematurely loosening policy. We will stay the course until the job is done. <laughs> <laughs> Powell says that one statement and immediately the markets tanked. I think the Dow went negative and look what happened to silver. It was almost a whole dollar move. And not a very long period of time. Oh, and it no. didn't end there. It kept on going up, down, up, down, up, down. And in fact, even until today, when yeah. I woke up this morning, <laughs> I got a notification. Silver's down 4%. Mm -hmm. But by the time I looked at my phone, it was up. So I'm like, well, what is going on here? People cannot figure out, are we going to pivot next? Are we not going to pivot? And everyone's just kind of worried about what the future holds. He would flip-flop from question to question. He'd be like, oh, we're going to fight inflation, unlimited rate hikes forever and then the next question would be asked and he'd be like well maybe next meeting we'll start the pivot i'm not sure it's like dude make up your mind it was so annoying listening to him go back and forth he didn't really give any information at all at least i didn't really think there was anything super decisive that he said there wasn't he is walking a type rope to try to decrease inflation by the way, the inflation that they unleashed in the first place with all their currency printing right. without tanking the economy. And why is this even important to silver? Because whatever the dollar does, silver does the opposite thing, right? Yes. So yes. if they keep on raising rates, then the dollar is going to appear to get stronger and stronger. And this is going to push silver lower yep. once they pivot. Oh, my goodness. Hopefully you buy your silver before that point, because who knows where it could go? I mean, it's up right. but who knows how high i i agree with you the markets are poised for this uh soft pivot at some point let's bring up the fed watch on the left that is a 50 basis point rate hike 52 percent chance they're saying 
On the right, that is a 75 basis point rate hike, which we've been doing for the last, what, four rate hikes, a 48% chance. Now, before the meeting even happened, it was like an 80% chance they were saying for a 75 basis point rate hike. Right after the meeting, it dropped all the way down to like 30%, and now we're basically 50-50. So it seems like no one knows what's going on. I think a pivot will likely be bullish for silver. And I think that's a, a good way to, you know, from a macro timing standpoint, you should be buying silver ahead of that. The markets are so forward thinking yes. that I think that they would react immediately. And I do think we would see the dollar start to tank. And I think this would be really good for silver. So yeah, I mean, if that's going to happen at before December 14th, Probably you should buy more silver before then, obviously. Mm -hmm. That's the Fed. And I think that's a, a really good indicator to keep your eye on. Another one is a big one, SD, and it is the midterm elections. Mm -hmm. And it is possible that we could see a dramatic change in Congress. If there is a red wave, you know, I, we don't know at this point if that's going to happen. But if there is, are metals going to go up, go down? I mean, what do you think? I did ask my uh, local coin shop dealer, Tim, the other day. He believes that if there is a red wave, that precious metals will drop initially. Mm. Initially. He said that a lot of what we do with metals is based in fear and uncertainty of, of future, it's around the, you know, especially with the economy. And maybe there would be an injection of hope that, that we could see an economic change. Uh, maybe an end, end to inflation. Um, I think that's a little unwarranted <laughs> to think it would just happen like that, no matter who's in Congress. Yeah. We're still going to have a split government, right? I think, you know, we're going to have inflation either way. It doesn't matter, you know, who's sitting in the chair. <laughs> I agree. I think, though, the sentiment might be, uh, you know, short-lived, but demonstrative. I think there could be a significant change in the price of silver, depending on who wins uh, this Tuesday. So keep your eye on the midterm elections. If you think maybe uh, you know a red wave is likely, then you might want to think about timing some of your purchases around that. If we get a little dip, that would be a great time to buy. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't really do the like macro timing, but I do look at sort of, I guess you could say micro timing. <laughs> If I'm going to buy silver this week and the price happens to be down today, then sure, I'll go buy today. But if the price happens to be up today, then I'll wait till tomorrow. So I kind of just look at it day to day, you know, like I'm already going to go buy more. Uh, and, and if the price is down, great, let's go do it today. You know right. what I mean? You know, one last thing too: uh, conflict, war. Uh, times of uncertainty can lead to a significant rise in the price of gold and silver. We're seeing that now with North Korea. There's a lot of saber rattling going on right now. But if that turns hot, it would really impact metals. Because again, I do agree with that. So you watch, you know, what's going on geopolitically as well when you're looking to time your silver purchase. As at least I well, do a little bit. Yeah, I mean, if we just look at earlier this year, right after Russia invaded Ukraine, mm -hmm. it was only about two weeks later that silver hit its high, which was, I think, around $26 an ounce. That's the highest it's been all year. You know, it's come down quite a bit since then, but that's definitely something to think about. Yeah, and a lot of these scenarios that we uh, talked about might be able to help you when buying, you know, smaller or larger tranches than normal, but bottom line, Shouldn't you just keep dollar cost averaging? Absolutely. That's what I've been saying for years. You buy a little bit this week, you buy a little bit next week. You know, maybe you buy every other week whenever you get paid or however you want to do it. But in my opinion, that is the best way to stack silver. Just dollar cost average. Over time, you'll have an average cost that you paid for your stack. It's not going to be, you know, overly high, but it's also not going to be overly low. But that's okay because this is a long-term thing. And over long periods of time, silver pretty much always goes up. Uh, you know, it's just how low can the dollar go, right? It's right. already lost 97% of its purchasing power. <laughs> so, you know, it, it can tank a lot more. And I don't have a lot of faith in the dollar, but I do have faith in precious metals. I agree with you. But I also think there are times where you might be able to time your silver purchases and get more silver for your fiat. 
Well, there you go. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Silver Pros. Stack like a pro.